I'm lifting my 500 pound motorcycle 100 times a day for 30 days. On my cross country trip, I've already gotten stuck in the middle of nowhere and sometimes I could pick it up, but sometimes I couldn't. After putting almost 10,000 miles on this bike in just a couple months, I already know it's the perfect bike for me. The sometimes struggle picking it up doesn't mean I have to downgrade to what I don't want. I'll rise to what I want. My goal is to get stronger and perfect the lifting technique. And a lot of times it's not so much strength as it is the leverage, it's technique, technique, technique. So um, what I just need to do is not just practice weightlifting and resistance bands, I just need to practice lifting my butt up like a hundred times a day. That's excessive. Today is day one of the challenge, and together we'll get to find out if this is the best idea I've ever had oh. or the dumbest. Oh. It's coming from there. Yeah, that's right. You're leaking gas. So today I'm gonna try some old tires. Luckily, Cody had to change out his old tires, so I'm gonna use his old tires since I crushed my bags and I don't think I have anything else. Yeah, let's try it out. <laughs> is still pretty difficult for me so I'm breaking it up three times a day 34 33 33 and then within those sets I'm gonna need to take some breaks in between the sets I'm not gonna do it every day so I'll want some time for my muscles to rest and actually build up so I actually build strength and just make sure I'm tracking to see that my muscle is increasing and then Depending on that, I'll either modify my protein amount or how often I'm doing this. We'll see. I'll only be doing the 100 lifts twice a week to minimize the risk of injury and maximize muscle building. I made sure to check with a bodybuilder friend and certified off-roading instructor, Jocelyn Snow, to make sure my form wouldn't be causing any future injuries. I realized this wasn't just a task. This was a workout, a hard one. So I almost doubled the calories and protein I've ever eaten in my life. <coughs> I wanted to track my progress in my body and the technique. So I took note of my weight, muscle, and protein mass at the start of the challenge. I had done jujitsu, kickboxing, some gym work, and more recently, power yoga over the years but I had never done any heavy weightlifting. I didn't know what I didn't know. And that was just getting started. I am in so much pain. <laughs> yeah, tomorrow will definitely be a rest day with an Epsom salt bath and some slow yoga. The good thing about doing 100 lifts in a day is you can really feel what you're actually working out. And my, whatever these things are called, are really sore. And surprisingly, my biceps, which tells me that I'm not using enough leg. I'll show you what I'm doing with my legs to make sure I'm using my legs. I have to like shimmy them back and feel the lift. Cause I'm like lifting in increments. Okay, I think I figured out, I'm gonna send this to Jocelyn to double check, but I think what happens is once I start lifting, I'm losing leg. So if you're much taller than me, I'm 5'3.75 inches tall, you might not have this issue, but when I get high, my legs are like too far forward. So I need to shift them back each time in order to make sure I'm still actually lifting with my legs. Now I have to bring it back. See how it's like this? I'm like angled back, I need to come in, lift, in, lift, in, lift. I think, let's see what Jocelyn says. Okay, so I can confirm, I think that me shimming my feet back each time I got a little more lift was the trick because now I am struggling to walk after just one set. And yesterday that was not the case. Yesterday I was just struggling to use my arms which I am a little bit right now too, but that's what I want. I want my legs to be healed because then that means that I'm using the stronger muscle group that this body has versus these. 
So I think I figured out another trick. Once I start coming up, besides shimming my feet closer under me, is just giving my butt a little like boop backwards. And that gives me like one extra inch of bike lift, making it easier again. I basically be a pro by day 30. So today my traps or whatever these are called and my biceps, they're not as sore like they were the first couple of days. So I think my form is getting better. And this time my lower back muscles are a little bit sore. Nothing is like super intensely sore though, like it was the first couple days. So that does make me feel better. Today is a rest day and I'm gonna take an Epsom salt bath. And if I have time, I'll do restorative yoga. And either tomorrow or after tomorrow, I'll start up again. Ooh! Coach is my neighbor who I met one day while I was practicing my U-turns. Congrats, I'm so excited for you. I was wondering if you had a bike. I'm actually filming right now. I'm doing another challenge. Uh-oh. This looks cool. Oh, look at your exhaust shield. That is fancy. That's really cool. I love it. How do you like it? It's fun, but I can only be in like second gear before it gets a little sketchy. Riding his new mini dirt bike made me really want one. So normally one set will take me about 20 to 30 minutes. So I tried not to take as many breaks. And now this one set took me about 10 minutes. So I think that's an improvement. Even if I have to pause like in between every single one. <laughs> All right, only 66 more to go. I am not that sore today. Rain or shine, people. Oh. <laughs> uh. Okay, maybe not rain. <laughs> I just have 10 more to go. <laughs> okay, no, I can't. I didn't sleep well last night. I woke up at like 2.30. I don't know why. I knew that on the other side of difficulty, is greatness. But I couldn't help but remember hearing how much lack of sleep can hurt muscle development. Having struggled with insomnia for six years, I started to worry that all my hard work would barely pay off. What's interesting is that of the weight they lost, the sleep deprived group lost 60% more muscle mass and 55% less fat than the group that got adequate sleep. I did not sleep well last night. I really don't feel like doing this today. I've been taking a lot of Epsom salt baths lately. I find that if I do them in addition to the bike lifts or other exercise, I usually sleep really good that night. So I've been doing them a lot more lately because one pound halfway through this challenge in two months doesn't seem like a lot, but I, I don't really know. So I think this will help me stay on top of my sleep if I do this more. And then about two weeks in, my knees started to hurt just a little bit. But I thought no pain, no gain. Again, I didn't know what I didn't know. By day 21, my knee started to hurt even more. This seemed too much. I reached out to my bodybuilding cousin and asked what she knew about hurting knees when lifting. So I go to physical therapy um, once a week for a knee injury that I had back in 2020 when I first started bodybuilding because I had no idea how to lift. I never lifted in my life and I did it wrong and then I had a knee injury. Um, and ever since then, I've been going to physical therapy to straighten my knee. Um, but as an athlete, a knee injury is, uh, once, once your knee hurts, that's like, uh, you, you need to stop. Like, you need to stop. Your knee should not hurt. So hey, everyone. My name is Matt Tolstoy. I'm an orthopedic rehab clinician out of New York City. 
I'm the creator of Motorsport Athlete, which is a program that's, you know, designed for the physical aspects of riding. People need help physically on the bike a lot. And uh, yeah, that's where I've kind of been pointing my practice at over the last couple of years. Mm -hmm. I think your knees started to bother you because it was just like a little too much too fast. You know, I saw the video of you lifting the bike and everything, form and everything looks super legit. Like all of that looks really good. I don't think you did anything wrong on that front. And it's like that just kind of escalated a little quickly. Maybe it's on 100 lifts two times a week. Maybe it's something like 10 lifts every other day. When we're designing programs for people, that's one of the things we're always trying to keep in mind. It's like, where is that workable edge where it's strenuous enough to change your body, to make change. It needs to be hard enough to make you change, but not so hard and so much so fast that then your body starts to kind of like retreat a little bit and starts to kind of uh, become irritated in certain ways because we want to try to like get that balance of those things right. That's a big deal with program design. After several weeks of giving my knees a rest, it was really bothering me that I hadn't been able to finish the challenge. I didn't want to risk my knees but I had to find a way to complete this. And then I had an idea. Okay, I actually did not expect that to, that, that was, that was not as easy as I thought it'd be. <laughs> so my bike weighs 501 pounds. And this bike, wait, 116 pounds. Oh my gosh. I should be able to lift myself. So what I want to do now is recreate the times that picking up my bike was really difficult. Even Wonder Woman had at least one week. As I look back on these last few months of lifting a 500 pound motorcycle until my knees gave out, it reminded me of the importance of never quitting for what you want. Never accepting the underperformers shooting on you when they say that because it's difficult, you should quit. They don't know the resolve in you. They don't know what's on the other side of difficulties. They've never realized their potential and think you shouldn't either. If there's anything I've learned from my parents being the first of their family to leave our little Caribbean island behind and follow their dreams in a new foreign country, it's that anyone can accomplish their goals. 
and to never give up. I'm stronger than I knew. So I got some x-rays done on my knees and there's nothing on it that looks too bad, but the doctor said that my knees clicking is like early arthritis. He gave me some home exercises to do so that I can uh, alleviate my knees. But other than that, I don't need to get surgery or get any shots or anything. The fact that the pain went away is a good sign. I just need to not lift my bike a hundred times. As far as insomnia, I'm about three weeks into this eight week Sleep Science Academy course by Devin Burke. For the first time in six years, without doing anything, I've actually been sleeping through the night. It's kind of early to tell, but I'll let you know if once I finish that, if you have insomnia, if it ends up working for me longer term, because holy cow, if I can actually cure insomnia with just working on the psychology, wow. Now, my goal wasn't necessarily to build a lot of muscle. It was to get stronger and improve my technique so that lifting my bike is an easier thing. And I think we accomplished that. As far as cost for the challenge, replacing my rear brake lever after that double drop was $168.99. The crash protection from SW Motec was $1,069.99. Thank you, SW Motec, for comping that so I didn't have to pay for that, except for getting it installed by my shop. And Becoming Wonder Woman cost zero dollars and zero cents. I'm currently working on 100 U-turns a day, extending the 30-day challenge to 90 days. So until the 90-day challenge is done, you can watch the 30-day challenge right over here, and I will see you in the next one.